Available now. Learn from Paul and Sandy Rennick of the Santa Clara Vanguard as they talk about preseason training as the season begins. Recorded just two days before spring training was to begin with the Corps, Paul and Sandy discuss how they prepare for the beginning of the season, preseason rehearsal techniques, and early season development of the percussion ensemble. Topics include the amount of time spent on technique versus music, how Paul creates short exercises for specific goals for the performers, how they teach for sound instead of technique, how they write the music, which comes first, the battery parts or the front ensemble music, how Sandy achieves such nuance and clarity in her writing, and they even discuss some of their favorite shows and performances through the years. We now share this short excerpt from this webinar. You can watch the entire conversation at your own convenience at marchingartseducation.com. So I have the next question. Um, thanks, everybody, for sending these questions in. Keep typing them in. This is from Brian. I'm gonna, I may not read this right the first time, so everybody bear with me with my reading skills. So Brian asks, how would you describe your approach to teaching philosophically, ensemble, rehearsal etiquette, and from a technical standpoint, especially with regards to snare and quads? Well, for the snare line... <laughs> And the quad now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I have a pretty extensive quad background that ended when I graduated high school, I guess. Um, no, I think one thing that I love, I, I'm totally biased, um, but one thing that I've loved about working with Paul over these years, not that I've been offered any jobs anywhere else, but the one thing that I really love about working with Paul is he teaches in a way that like if I had a kid and I, I talked to parents of members if I had a kid I would want them to go play in his group because I know that he would be respected I know that he would be treated professionally and the expectations would be very clear to him and I think that's how you set up a group to succeed and I think that's why there's just a, a, a level of consistency and I, I think it all stems from just the way the members are treated and Paul's just entire approach and I think um, all the texts that come in and teach that our former students I think they all adopt the same language um, I can honestly say I started teaching with Paul in 1998 at the Carolina Crown and over the and all the way up until I stopped going on the road in 2006 I don't think I ever saw him give out any push-ups or laps or berate somebody for making a mistake it's always definitely um, there can be the tightening of the screws, and you can tell when he gets very serious about something. But overall, I think that anybody who's been taught by him in this environment, especially, um, would agree with me that they feel they understand what their job is, and they um, and they feel like um, that they they want to they want to uh, perform for him. They want to like they understand how much he is putting into it and how much he cares and how much respect he has for them. And I think that it just becomes reciprocated with the members. And I'll hand it over to you. <laughs> I, th I think there's a, a couple of um, guiding principles that that you know teaching at a university. I think it's you're very conscious of of teaching in a way in drum corps that people would would respect outside of drum corps. In other words, it's sort of a universal teaching philosophy. In other words, that you know that it's it you can confuse it with like we're we're not very easy on the on the players. I'm, I'm not like uh, we don't take it too easy on them. We just focus entirely on the music. And it's not about punishment and suffering and and, and all that kind of thing, which you know honestly back back in the day it used to be all about that, you know, all about just like um, you know, like punishment, suffering, forcing people to do things. So we try to try to focus entirely on the music itself. So if you if you address a problem, it's it's not uh, we're not simply pointing out the negative thing about it. We're we're simply addressing what we want the music to sound like and get the person to sort of create an image in their head about what it should sound like. Uh, and then it becomes less personal, less abusive, and more uh, down to business about what we're trying to get done. Uh, and so, you know, just being conscious of of what you know, like what a teacher in a in a normal situation, in like a school or something like that, would would be expected to to do. I think we try to treat it the same way. Um, uh, I don't really allow the staff to use profanity, and we don't we don't. Uh, uh, 
get personal, you know, in terms of attacking kids about problems and things like that. But I should say, you know, half the battle uh, is is picking the right kids. You know, I I I have to say, like, that's probably if if I were to to prioritize the top two things that we do, that is, right, you know, figure out how to program the best show and write the music. And the second thing is pick the right kids, you know. And so the audition process is pretty serious. It's, it's very, there's a lot of filters to go through, and we try to find the best people uh, who are going to take us the farthest, you know. So, you know, a lot of times you're dealing with, with kids, right? You're dealing with teenagers or, or people that are young, and they're trying to figure some things out. So we're, um, we're, not, we're not trying to be too militant about it, but we work hard and we, we understand what we need to do, and everyone, everyone is clear about what they need to do. And so um, it's, I don't know, I could talk for a while about it, but I, I think that probably answers the question in terms of just, just trying, to be, trying to be above board trying to be uh, teach in a way that everybody would would find acceptable you know no matter if you had an open rehearsal I think that people would, would kind of appreciate it yeah. well I love that answer thank you both that's um, that's one of the reasons that everybody I can respect you guys so much is that part of that what you just described 